So AMD claimed to have created the fastest gaming CPU in the world, and it's via a really unique design. It's not with more cores or higher clock speeds, but simply with more cash. And today we're going to find out if that is actually the case. Is the 5800X 3D actually the fastest gaming CPU that you can buy right now? Because if it is, that's pretty interesting. Like I said, it doesn't have the highest clock speeds. It's not the most expensive either. So really the only special thing going on here is that absolute mountain of L3 cache. Also, this 3D vCache, AMD said that it's going to be more of a series than anything, something that they're going to continue offering with future generations. It doesn't look like it's going to be the norm, like in the baseline models, like the launch options, for example. This is more so looking like a bit of a special edition type of feature, something that they plan to implement, for example, between CPU generations. So on paper, you know, it's not too different from the 5800X. It's got eight cores, 16 threads at 105 watts, although at a slightly lower boost clock, but they've tripled the the amount of L3 cache. They've done this by actually thinning the core complex die and stacking their V cache on top. So this isn't just a factory overclocked 5800X or something. In fact, it's clocked lower, but this is physically a different CPU. So with more cache available to the CPU, effectively more lower latency memory without having to resort to RAM, I'm personally really interested to see what effect this has on the most CPU bound gaming scenarios. Games like Valorant, Apex, CSGO, games where a current mid to high end G GPU might only be at around 80% usage, and instead all of the pressure is on the CPU to spit out as many frames as possible. Effectively, situations where, yeah, you are pretty CPU bottlenecked. So as for the CPUs that I'm testing the 5800X 3D against today, of course we have to also include the Intel 12900KS. This is currently Intel's fastest gaming CPU, although they've approached things the more typical way, simply by juicing up the clock speeds to an insane 5.5 gigahertz. This is a lot more expensive than the 5800X 5800X 3D though, so in terms of an equal price comparison, we'll also take a look at the 12700K. Then lastly, to isolate the exact benefit that the extra L3 cache has here, we'll also throw in the original Ryzen 5800X. Now to illustrate the biggest difference that we possibly can between these CPUs, we need to use a pretty powerful GPU, and for that we're using the RX 6950XT, which is effectively a factory overclocked 6900XT, and it's also AMD's fastest GPU at the moment. Although we are pretty much CPU bottlenecked in all of these benchmarks, it does help having a GPU that can render as many frames as possible and also push that CPU bottleneck as hard as possible. I will also mention that I've used a DDR4 memory kit across both the AMD and the Intel test bench. Despite Intel's newer stuff supporting DDR5 and that potentially giving you a small benefit in some games, I'm just more interested here in completely isolating the testing between the CPUs rather than, you know, potentially introducing more variables and having to second guess myself. Just keep that in mind though, DDR5 can give you a small benefit here and there, but it is also a lot more expensive. So let's dive into the benchmarks. And firstly, just a quick explainer of what we're looking at here. The colored bars indicate the average frame rate across the benchmark run, orange for AMD and blue for Intel. Then we have the white bars in the middle, which show the slowest 1% of frame rate. And then the gray bars towards the left for the lowest 0.1%. So average FPS is the most important here. That's the colored bars, but the 1% and 0.1% results are also very important when it comes to illustrating whether the CPU is stuttering or struggling to keep up. Each result that I'm showing here as well is the average of five separate benchmark runs and that way we get a nice clean final result. So kicking things off here we have the new F1 which was released just a few days ago and AMD's 5800X 3D manages to beat the much more expensive and higher clocked 12900KS. We also see about a 12% bump in frame rate here over the original 5800X so purely from that extra CPU cache we go from basically time the i7 to being the fastest option in this scenario. But then we have Doom Eternal and things here flip around the other way. For whatever reason, Intel performs a bit better here. We do still see a slight performance improvement from that 3D V cache over the vanilla 5800X, but we're still a few frames behind the 12700K and the 12900KS. Now, of course, anyone can guess here, the gaming experience is identical no matter which of the four CPUs you're using here, but that's not really the point. Like here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, no one's going to be playing this game at 200 FPS plus, but this is basically the only way that we can illustrate a difference between these CPUs since they're all very quick. In this specific scenario though, there's a huge boost from that 3D V cache on the 5800X 3D, over a 25% uplift over the standard 5800X. That also makes it about 10% faster than the Intel i9. But now let's switch gears to the more competitive stuff. One game that I I was 
really interested to test here, of course, was Apex Legends. This game has a 300 FPS in-game cap that is impossible to override, and it's also a game which is really hard to benchmark for CPUs. Unfortunately, there's no built-in benchmark like there is for the three previous games that we've looked at, and benchmarking in the firing range as I've done for GPUs just doesn't simulate anywhere near the amount of CPU load that you'd see in a normal game. So the best that we can do here is to benchmark by actually playing. I've used the control mode here to capture 25 minutes of frame time data for each CPU, same map, same character selected, even starting on the same side of the map. So again, don't take these results too seriously. You know, I've controlled for as much as possible, but it's still not perfect. But I would be confident in saying that the 5800X3D here is the strongest performer. By averaging 299.4 FPS here, we are holding that in-game cap pretty consistently, with the 1% and 0.1% lows also stronger than the 12900KS. But when we switch to CSGO using a workshop benchmark here, that enormous 5.5 GHz boost on the i9 seems to give it the edge, and surprisingly, I actually found the 5800X3D here to be slower than the original 5800X. So remember, the 3D cache chip has a lower boost clock than the standard 5800X, and so that's likely what we're seeing in effect here with CSGO. The picture gets even more interesting though when we take a look at Rainbow Six. Again, built-in benchmark here with high repeatability between runs, and for whatever reason, I kept seeing intermittent frame time spikes on the 12900KS. Granted, we're talking about spikes down to 240 FPS for the 0.1% lows, that's not really something that you're going to feel, but still, that's about half of what we're seeing on the 5800X3D. If you happen to play Rainbow Six with the 12900KS, I'd be really interested to hear if you're seeing the same thing with the built-in benchmark. Then we have Valorant. Similar to Rainbow Six and CSGO, this game can run at insanely high frame rates, and for benchmarking, I've used the spike plant scenario in the training area. Frame rates are much higher here compared to an actual match, but it's basically the only way that we can get an accurate comparison between these CPUs. And yeah, we do see that AMD 5800X3D again come out on top. It's not a huge bump over the standard 5800X, but there is a pretty big difference when it comes to the slowest 1% and 0.1% of frames. Specifically, that slowest 1% result here is really strong compared to the 12900KS, 657 FPS versus Intel's 536. What makes this even more impressive though is when we take a look at power consumption. So here I've measured CPU power as reported by Hardware Info in this exact scenario in Valorant, and the results are simply mind-blowing. I mean, I knew the 12900KS would be an absolute fireball in programs like Cinebench or Blender, but this just goes to show how much power Intel are pumping through this thing just to maintain those clock speeds above 5.3 gigahertz. What else was super interesting was that our top performer, which is the 5800X3D, comes out with the lowest power consumption of the four. Again, this kind of makes sense seeing as the boost clocks are tuned lower than the original 5800X. In this game, at least, there was a pretty big difference, about 4.4 gigahertz for the 5800X3D and 4.8-ish for the original 5800X, giving us about a 25 watt difference in power. Finally, let's take a look at input lag. Here I'm using the 360Hz ASUS ROG Swift with NVIDIA's Reflex module to measure the delay between firing a shot in Valorant and seeing that shot register on screen. I've never actually tested Intel versus AMD input lag before, so I was pretty interested to see if there was any big discovery here, but actually there's not much to speak of. All CPUs here were tested the exact same way and also after a fresh system restart, and they're all pretty much the same when it comes to the result. I did find the standard 5800X to be one millisecond slower on average compared to the 3D Vcash model. That's pretty interesting, but it is a pretty small difference. So AMD's little 3D Vcash experiment here turned out to be pretty good. Honestly, it's kind of insane to see this clocked lower than a 5800X, but it beats a 12900KS, Intel's fastest gaming CPU while pulling less power in Valorant, for example, around 100 watts less. I'm also really happy that they, you know, started off with this 3D Vcash in an eight core package and not, you know, reserve it for the higher margin models like the 12 core or a 16 core. You know, a 5950X 3D would be pretty cool. I'd love to see that, but eight cores just makes a lot more sense for a lot more people. Now, to be totally fair, there are some situations where that extra CPU cache might not have a whole lot to offer and in the end, 
it is more about clock speeds. But from what I've seen so far, when it comes to gaming, I think the 5800X3D is going to have the upper hand most of the time. Not to mention, it's cheaper than the i9, requires way less cooling, and you've got a lot more motherboards to choose from. You can also run it with DDR4 memory without having to sacrifice what your motherboard options are, which is a really important point worth mentioning. I know a lot of us are excited for Zen 4 around the corner, but that's going to be an entirely new AM5 platform, DDR5 only. The entry cost is probably going to be a lot more expensive than what we're looking at here. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the 5800X3D is a really compelling option now, and I think it's going to stay that way even when Zen 4 comes out, because not everyone's going to be prepared to upgrade with DDR5 and potentially the really expensive motherboards. With that sort of stuff in mind, the 5800X3D is looking pretty good, if not for performance, then at least for value and efficiency. Also, it looks like a damn good upgrade if you're currently on first or second gen Ryzen. Just update your motherboard BIOS, drop it in, and you're good to go. Plenty of CPU performance and headroom for the next couple of generations of GPUs without having to worry about expensive motherboards or DDR5 memory. So big, big fan of this one. If you're keen to pick it up, I will leave a link down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.